This is Roots Cafe. It's a uh, raw cafe. And the reason why my partner and I, Jody, started it is we have a, um, a gym. I guess you could call it a gym, but it's, it's a gym like this is a restaurant. And uh, we noticed that people who are working out in the gym and then they get a good workout and we see them, you know, with uh, Gatorade and we see them with gels and we see them with uh, protein powder. And I'm like, oh, we got to do something about this. So we opened up a little cafe over here um, to have smoothies. So when they finish their workout, they can get something healthy. And it was just for our gym members when, when they finish their workout to come down over here. And it was a nice thing. And little by little, we started adding more and more because they were coming down and they were bringing their friends with them. They were bringing their kids with them. They were bringing their um, family members with them. And it got busier and busier in there. And we were a takeout. So there's absolutely no room in there for them to sit down and eat. And the guy that was in here, he was a DJ, was kind enough to move down. And the guy that was next to him moved down. And everybody moved down, click, 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 all the way down. And we got this. And then we realized, oh, this is going to be great for some nice tables and everything. So um, then we went to uh, Northvale um, Board of Health and the uh, building department. And they said, you can't put tables in there. We said, what? What do you mean we can't put tables in there? Well, for whatever reason. And uh, they said, as long as you don't have any tables, you can do anything you want. So this is what we did. We have hydroponics, we have plants, we have nice seating arrangements, and we're not even connected to that. So um, what you're supposed to do is when you have a takeout is you're not supposed to eat where you take it out. You're supposed to take it someplace else. So we created someplace else, and here we are. You're allowed to do anything you want, and it works very well, and everybody's happy. We're happy. This is what we did. So, so that's us. Um, my first question for you is, what is food? Ah, you know, we were um, asked so many times to, to do a, a nutritional uh, conference or lecture or something. And basically what, what we do is say, just eat food. Just eat food. So what is food is actually a very good question. Food to us is... There was this guy called Jack Lane. You know, a lot of people are pretty young. Maybe they don't, they never heard of Jack Lane. But he used to be on television in the 50s and 60s. And he was so far ahead of his time that he was back to where we started from originally. He would say, if man played with it, don't eat it. So in other words, if you open up a package, you should be, flags should go up all over the place. You take a look at that package and you see anything on there that you don't recognize you don't consider it food. There's no such thing as junk food. We hear that fast food, junk food. There's food and then there's poison to your body. That's it. So if you want to put a label on something, don't label food. Don't put an adjective on food. Food is food. Everything else, you can put an adjective on it. You can call it fast, fast stuff, but it's not food. It's, it's, it's not good for your body. And you know, there's, there's actual research to prove what I'm saying is, is accurate. If you go back and you look at the top four killers of Americans today, which is also spreading throughout the West because everybody wants to be like us. You go back and you look at the top four killers. I'm not going to tell you what they are. If you're interested, you'll look it up. And you'll see what they are. And you'll see that they're all diet related. Now, it's as simple as that. If you want to eat healthy, you eat food. If you want to be physically fit, you stay physically active. That's it. It's as simple as that, and it's as hard as that. Um, there's, there's so much out there that's confusing. If you go to a library or if you go to a bookstore, the largest portions are diet and exercise. That's it. So it's, it's understandable how people can get confused looking at all that stuff because there's so much information going on. Um, one time uh, fat is bad for you, another time fat is good for you, one time protein is good for you, one time protein is no good for you. But if you have a basic philosophy on, I don't want to eat food, 
And this has been going on for thousands of years. Some guy called Hippocrates, he said, or Hippocrates, I forget his name, some Greek a long time ago. He said, let thy food be thy medicine. And that was a long time ago. Aristotle said smoking is bad for you. So this is nothing new. And what Jack Lane did is nothing new. He's just taking us back to where we originally were, eating food from the earth, moving, staying physically active, making sure all our joints are moving all the time. You don't have to do a thousand pull-ups and 500 push-ups and you don't need a six-pack ab. All that stuff will automatically happen when you're asking your body to do something that it thinks you're serious. If your body thinks you're serious, it's going to adapt. If your body thinks you're serious, you did, you're gonna be going out um, in inclement weather, in the rain, in the snow, cold, you go out, your body will adapt to it, without a doubt. The way your body adapts to poison, or what we call now fast food, what we call uh, junk food, is you get inflammation in your arteries. Now, if you look at, uh, we'll just take one for diabetes. There used to be type one diabetes, which you're born with. And then there was something called adult onset diabetes. Now it's no longer called that because kids get it. So we call it type two diabetes. Where did that come from all of a sudden? Why all of a sudden within the last 150 years are there so many heart disease? How come? The only thing that's changed is our diet and our physical activity. That's what's changed. So you want to solve a lot of the problems. You want to solve it, it, it. The fact that you have a doctor means that you expect to get sick. You shouldn't even have a doctor. Uh, and I'm not against doctors. Believe me. I think doctors are very important. They're very good. You need them. I broke my ankle. First thing I did was go to a doctor. But if, if we're, we're, we're conditioned to think that we need doctors all the time. We're conditioned to think that we have to do cleanses and we have to do um, proteins. And our, well, another one is, is this always gets me. Uh, we get a lot of people coming in here and they say, can I get a protein shake? And you say, sure, of course. You know, well, do you, what kind of protein you're going to put in it? I said, whatever you want. Almonds, you want hemp seeds, you want um, kale, green leafy lettuce, any kind of green leafy lettuce you want. No, I mean, I mean the protein powder. I, why are you picking, picking protein powder? Why don't you? There's three macronutrients that we get from food. Protein, carbohydrates, which everybody calls carbs, and fat. Now, why did we pick protein? Why do we have powdered protein and not powdered fat? Give me some powdered protein in there and give me some powdered fat and give me some powdered carbohydrates and throw in some water and I got my smoothie. You would think I was out of my mind if I suggested that. So why am I not out of my mind to suggest powdered protein? I mean, that's just, it's just, there's something wrong with our thinking and I, I, I think I know what it is. If, and this is a problem, I'm not quite sure how to solve it, but these big food companies that keep the food going, if they're just selling apples and tomatoes, or, by the way, celery and carrots, none of this stuff has the um, label on it, the nutritional label. There's no such thing as a nutritional label on a avocado, for instance. So that's a good indication of food. It doesn't have a nutritional label on it. So if, if you're eating stuff with nutritional labels on it, again, flags should go up all over the place. You can get your protein, you can get your fat, you can get your carbohydrates in exactly the right amount of proportions that you need if you're eating food. If you're playing around with, with um, concentrated items like protein powder or white sugar or anything else that's concentrated, like even agave nectar. Agave nectar, uh, a lot of people think that it's wonderful for you. And the reason why we don't carry agave nectar here 
is the same reason why we don't carry olive oil or coconut oil or any kinds of oil is because even maple syrup. I mean, maple syrup sounds great, but you take sugarcane. Sugarcane is wonderful for you. It's great. The people who pick sugarcane, they're eating it all day long and nothing happens to their teeth. They're healthy. They're fine. But when you take the sugarcane and you cut acres of it to make a pound of sugar, our body has no idea what to do with that. It is too concentrated for our body to even know what's going on. So it's not the sugar that's bad for you. It's what we did to the sugar cane that became bad for you. If you want the right amount of sugar, cut a piece of sugar cane, take the skin off it, and chew on it. It's delicious. It's, it, it really is delicious. Raw honey. Now, a lot of vegans don't like raw honey because the bees are working hard or something. I, I don't really know the reason for that. I guess if I felt that way, I would look into it and try and figure it out. But I did look into it, and it's not a convincing argument for me because I know that if I'm hungry and uh, 20,000 years ago I see a beehive, I'm not going to wonder if those bees are you know, like working for me. I'm going to eat the honey, and it's fine. I'm not going to find sugar. I'm not going to find... Um, coconut oil. I'll eat the whole coconut and it will be in the perfect proportions that we need for our body. And that's basically the idea of um, Tim's question. <laughs> anyway, I even forgot the main question, but I guess that's what food is. Yeah. All right. So that's so, our ideas. Yeah. And so clearly this is uh, it's touted as a raw vegan restaurant. Yes. Or eatery. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So why, um, why no cooking, and why vegan? Why okay. not? Why not? Why is chicken not a food or beef? Good, good point, and, and that's a very good question. I personally have no problem with cooking. It breaks down the food. If you start with food, if you start with a cow, it's not food. If you start with uh, any kind of farmed animal, it's not food, and I, I'll tell you why, and you know, a little bit later on. But if you cook certain foods, it actually is pre-digesting your food. So it's easier for your body to metabolize. And we've been doing that for 30, 40,000 years. Once we controlled fire, we had food that was actually cooked. We don't do it here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't eat cooked food. Um, the, the reason why we have it raw here is just to introduce mainstream customers that you can get a really good, healthy, vibrant, energy full food very easily. The other thing, reason why we do that is because there's a myth out there saying that in order to eat healthy, it's very expensive. It's not very expensive. You just have to make the proper choices. In order to eat healthy, and, and that's just in the beginning, let alone what happens to you later on. Our goal here is for you to be healthy when you're 50 and 60 and 70 and 80. That's our goal. Same thing at the gym. Our goal is so you're able to play with your grandkids and your great grandkids. That's basically what our goal is. So the, the, the food here, raw, vegan, is not necessarily all that you're going to eat. If you find an animal that's not farmed and you want to go that route, I don't have any problem with it. But if you take a cow, for instance, a cow, a cow would not exist if it wasn't for man. They would die off. They're all, um, you take a baby calf and if it can grow in three months to be a, a, a ton animal, it's filled with antibiotics because it's all kept tight together. The animals would get sick. It's filled with growth hormones because it would be super expensive to just take a nice calf, put it out, let it eat grass, grow, you know, and then, and then go out and, and slaughter it, make a hamburger or something. But it would take way too long for the food companies to make any kind of money on that. So that's why we have processed animals. Processed animals. 
Cows are supposed to eat grass out in the fields. Um, chickens are supposed to eat grass. Um, we don't do that anymore. We take, uh, actually on, on cows, we make them into cannibals. We take the, the byproducts of slaughtering the animals, this part that we can't use to make the hamburgers and the steaks and everything, we dry it and feed it back to the animals again because it still has the growth hormones in there, it still has the antibiotics in there. So now, the animals that are supposed to be eating grass, in addition to all the chemicals that we put in there to make them grow fast and be disease-free, we start feeding them themselves over again because it's cheaper than to put all brand new stuff back into them because those antibiotics and, and the, the growth hormones stay in the byproducts of the cows. So again, you can cook a cow and eat it and it will do damage. It will do damage. You have inflammation in your arteries. Now, we hear about all this stuff, it's anti-inflammatory. I don't even think anybody even knows what that means. Great, it's anti-inflammatory. But if you ask some, or, or gluten-free, gluten-free. Oh, I'm on a gluten-free diet. Okay, what's gluten? It's bad for you. Okay, why is gluten bad for you? Why is cholesterol bad for you? Why do you take drugs to cut back on your cholesterol? The reason why we do all these things is because the big companies tell us that it's good for us and we need to do it. That is the only reason I could think of that we add protein into our uh, drinks. So that, the protein part, when I looked into it, that started with bodybuilding. When we used to, um, we used to, we still do. You go into a gym and you work your back and your chest today, and then you go the next day and you work your legs and your abs the next day, and then you, you work all different body parts, and then Thursdays you go out and do your cardio. That's not real life. When you have to do something like our furniture, if you carry our furniture up from the river, you're doing cardio, you're doing strength training, you're doing um, form that you need to get back up the hill, not perfect form so you can do a bicep curl. There's so much more to physical activity. There's so much more to, to eating properly than we do now. But if, if, if that's all that we did, the large companies wouldn't make any money. So we're trained to believe that you have to go to a gym, you have to get on a machine and go like this for 10 reps, and then you move it down one, and you go like this for six reps, and then you go over to the next machine and you go like this. Nothing, nothing is even up and down anymore. We, we sit in chairs. By the way, we don't have chairs in the gym. We have chairs here because we want to attract some customers. You know, so we have chairs in here. I would love it. That's, that's a table back over there, and you could sit at that table. That table back there is actually a lot healthier for you than chairs because we are made to go up and down. We're not made to just go sideways like this. You go to your car, you go to your desk, you go to the gym, you go to your bed. Everything is this way. We don't go up and down anymore. When, when people come into our gym and they haven't been exercising, even if they have been exercising, we ask them just to lie down and stand up four or five times, completely out of breath, everything hurts, and it's, it's an exercise. It's an exercise. Same thing with, with food. The simpler you get with food, the better off you're going to be. Everything here in Roots is very simple and delicious. When uh, we get an idea how to make something, and you look at recipes that really look good, we'll see oil in there, and we'll see uh, vanilla extract in there, and we'll see all kinds of processed items in there, baking powder, baking soda, uh, coconut oil. We work around it. We work around it. And we come up with stuff that is actually delicious, but it's food. It's food. So our basic philosophy is Eat food and stay physically active and you will be healthy for a very long time and you will cut down on 
on a lot of our health problems. I was at the bank the other day and I was making a deposit, small one, and the, 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 the person behind the, the uh, counter there says, oh, she's looking at pocket book. I forgot my aspirin. Does anybody have any aspirin? Everybody opened up. They reach in the pocket. The guys reach in the pocket. The women open their Everybody offered her everything. Why? Why is that? You don't need aspirins. You don't need Tylenol. You don't need any of that stuff. I have clients who I trained that were on everything. Everything. He's 68 years old now. He goes to his doctor and he fills out his medication. Zero. He's eating food. He's eating food. Now, there's a lot of things that you'll have to wean yourself off because we're, we're so used to eating other stuff. And one of the biggest things that I found for my own self is that, you know, being, being um, Greek, we always had these giant Sunday dinners. And the cultural part about, mm, you know, something that baklava, it's great, mom, but, you know, I, I'm going to pass on that. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm okay. I'm okay. That, to me, is the hardest part because you don't want to... Um, the food has a, such a powerful um, cultural effect that it's hard to step away from some things. So, I know some people who fake it. You know, they put it underneath the plate. They take a little bit. They pretend like they're eating it. They talk a lot. There, there is a way to do it. There is a way to do it. But, to me, that was the hardest part for me. Um, changing food is, is also difficult for some people and not... I remember when I decided, okay, that's it. I was maybe in my 20s or something. And I used to always pay attention to what I was eating. But it was more if it had preservatives in it, I would, I would not eat it. But, I, you know, sugar was okay. Natural ingredients, you know, all natural. Pepperidge Farm cookies is fine. And a big glass of milk. But then I started thinking, okay... I'm not going to have this chocolate cake anymore. So if I went to a restaurant, I would smoosh it up and I'd smell it. I'd put it right in front of my face and I would say, I am stronger than that. I am not going to... And it worked. It worked for me. I had a client, she was asking me, I said, well, what, what's your... She wanted to lose weight, you know? And this is when I first started personal training. And she says, my, my biggest weakness is Reese's peanut butter cups. So I said to her, I said, here's what you do." Go out and buy the biggest box of Reese's peanut butter cups that you could possibly find. Put them on your dining room table, and every day you walk by and say, I'm stronger than that. The next week, I go in and I say, how'd you make out? She says, I ate every one of them. <laughs> so I, I learned from that, and I decided that that's probably not the best approach for everybody. So everybody is different. How are you going to do it? Some people, cold turkey, stop. Other people, first, you have to decide that you want to do it. And then you figure out how to do it. But when you go, let's say you go out to a restaurant. I'm going to just order a salad. I'm going to tell them how I want it. And I am not going to have that pina colada. Or I'm not going to have that chocolate cake afterwards. You know in advance that you're not going to have the bread before the dinner, before you go in. You go in there knowing for sure. So there's no temptation. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be tempted because I know that I'm going in in advance and I'm not going to do it. But first, you have to realize and believe that that's important to do. If you don't believe it and you think, well, maybe I'm going to start New Year's Day, maybe I'm going to start, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work unless you're totally committed to it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to cut out everything that you think is bad immediately. All I'm saying is the awareness has to be there if you believe it to be true. And I see great results on people who are considered old. Our gym, our gym there, I think the, the average overall on a bell curve is about 50 years old. And they bring in their kids, they bring in their high school kids, they bring in um, uh, people that are on sports teams. And those 50 year old people are in better shape than those kids. So. I know what we're doing is working. I know what we're doing here is working. The, the trick is to get it out there 
uh, to more people, and that's what we're trying to do. My partner is a teacher in, in uh, the Northvale school system. I'm retired. You know, I have just showing people what I did, and my credibility now is I've been doing it a long time. I'm old, and I'm still working, you know, and I'm still active, and I'm still physically active. So that's, that's my credibility. And then I went and got my nutritional uh, certification because people have nutritional certification. I went and got my personal training certification because people want personal training certifications. You know, so it, it was worthwhile because all those books that I used for the personal training and for the nutrition and everything else, I put them in my backpack and run up and down hills. That's the most useful information and you, most useful stuff that I got from all those books because they all preach complicated systems. Now, as far as that goes, they do work. Every single diet that I know works. If your goal is to lose weight, if your goal is to lose, the Atkins diet works, the paleo diet works, the fasting diet works, just juice works, no juice works, they all work. But if your goal is to live long and healthy, none of them work. It's a lifestyle. You have to believe in your head that I'm going to eat food and I'm going to stay physically active. That's it. Get outside, eat food, stay physically active, and make sure all your joints are moving as far as they can. That's, that's basically how easy it is and that's basically how hard it is. And that's the message that Jody and I are trying to get out there. And uh, you know, it works for us and it works for everybody I know that's been with us for a long time. It works. Can you list just a few foods that are maybe mistakenly labeled as healthy in a lot of Tofu! Tofu is, is in, in, in our opinion here. The reason why tofu is like that, you know, like it's, it's just as bad as, again, agave nectar. Um, uh, I hate to say, but sports drinks, I'll put it that way. Um, goo on, on uh, uh, long distance runs. My partner and I, we, we do adventure races, and we're out there for 24 hours straight, no sleep, nothing. We take an avocado, we'll take some cherry tomatoes, we'll take nuts, trail mix uh, that we make here on our own, and we're out there, we don't have to sleep, we actually place first, second, or third on 90% of them, and we see all these other people, they're in very good condition, but they're eating the goo, and they're taking, uh, you know, they're carbohydrates and their protein or whatever it is and all different kind of pills they're taking their salt pills nothing we bring food and that's it and I'll tell you something else too if you're doing something physically that you actually need a supplement or you actually need a, a uh, stimulant don't do it you're doing something wrong you take um, Olympic champions, you take uh, uh, professional athletes, and you go and you look at them. When they're 50 years old, most of them can't even move anymore. And the problem is that we follow their training. Their training is out there. You can look and see how Muhammad Ali trained. You can go out and see how Greta White's trained. You can go out and see how Alberto Salazar trained. But you're not them. You will never make your living off of running marathons. You will never make your living being a football player, professional football player. And the reason why I say never is because it's that much, that many people out of billions will get there. But we all train like them. We're not them. Most of us, in fact, 99% of us should be physically active and eat food because that's where we're going to be. Now, if you're making $3 million every time you swing a bat, go ahead. Whatever you want to do, drink your Gatorade, eat your gel, eat whatever you want. You're going to be making $3 million, but you give up your health. You give up your health. So when you're 50 years old, and you look them up. Go look up these people. You look up Jack Lane. He lived to 95. He was healthy. He died healthy. 
That's the goal. And he was physically active. He ate food before man played with it. You go up and I mean, look at, and, and some of these athletes, they're, they're fantastic. But the things that they have to do to stay at that level, they were born lucky, but they have to maintain that level, it's not healthy. And go look them up. I'm not making it up. Just go look them up. So if you're an average, normal human being, as most of us are, eat food and stay physically active. That's it. Agave nectar, processed. Coconut oil, which is supposed to be great, processed. Olive oil, processed. Maple syrup, processed. Vanilla extract, processed. Here's one for you that's going to get me into trouble. Juices. Juices. You take a juice machine and you put the apple in there and you put the carrot in there and you put the whatever in there and you have a juice. All the fiber, all the pulp is gone. You eat a carrot, right? You eat a carrot. If you eat one carrot, that's huge. That's a lot. If you eat two carrots, you must have been starving. To make a glass of carrot juice that you could actually drink right down, you could take eight carrots. You can't possibly eat eight carrots. The rest of that stuff, after the second carrot, your body has no idea what to do with it. So it inflames or it, it, it is toxic, or it turns to fat. And then we take all these pills and we eat all these superfoods to get rid of the inflammation when all we had to do was eat food on its own. We get so many people saying, I'm gonna do a juice cleanse. We talk them out of it. Because it's like cleaning out your garage. Okay, I'm gonna clean out my garage today and tomorrow I'm gonna to fill it up again. And then the next day I'm going to clean out my garage and the next day I'm going to fill it up again. It just doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't make any sense for your body to do that either. There's no such thing as a, your body is made to clean itself. If you're physically active and you eat food, your body is wonderful. You need supplements, your brain, your brain. If you're, if, if you convince your body, you're serious about what you're doing. Your brain is going to add in all the chemicals that it needs. This is the best pharmacy, the best doctor right from here that you're ever going to have if you keep yourself healthy. Everything in your body is a chemical reaction. If you screw it up with the garbage that you put in it, you're going to screw up those chemical reactions. And it's going to do all kinds of weird stuff to you that we have no idea what it does. We're still wondering. We're just finding out of all the bacteria that we have. So you're, if you go to the doctor for everything that's wrong with you and you're taking antibiotics like crazy, you're doing damage. I'm not saying there's no place for antibiotics, but the way we prescribe them, we, the way we accept these prescriptions and just pop them like they're nothing are doing damage to us. And if you don't believe me, just look around. How many people, Jody does this with her kids. She'll drive down the road and she'll say, how many of these people do you think could run a mile and run two flights of stairs, save their kid and run back with their kid if there was a fire? Why? Why is that? Why is it zero? We're all capable of doing it. In our gym and here, there's nobody special. There is no athletes, but they all can do that. How many people, how many people you think over there can climb an 18 foot rope? 10 times. Zero. We have 50 year old people who do like nothing. Why? And they're not on any pills, they're not on any diet, they're not on any anything. All they are is eating food and physically active. And we don't care about age. There's plenty of things that people think are healthy for them and they're not. And what about um, something that doesn't have a nutrition label on it, like corn? Mm -hmm. Ah. Or soy. That's another one. Corn, if you look at the original where corn came from, well, do it. Do it on your own. Look up where corn came from. Corn is a very interesting item here. Um, you know how uh, flowers grow to attract bees 
and um, things will grow to attract certain animals to keep them going, like Venus fly traps attract flies. Corn attracted humans. Corn figured out how to manipulate humans to take care of it. If there was no humans, there would be no corn. Simple as that. Another problem with corn and soybeans is that they are um, genetically modified. Some people think that genetically modifying food, original food, uh, is okay because you can feed a lot more people. You know, look up who says that. Look up who says that. And it turns out that it's giant companies that are going to make a lot of money off GMO foods. They could patent GMO foods. You can't patent ginger. You can't patent um, echinacea. You can't patent mint leaves, but you can patent GMOs. So I'll leave that part up to you. Uh, corn, soybean, uh, that, that's, that's, I was telling you guys before, that's, that's all we serve. We now eat corn, soybean. That's what we eat. That's what we eat. We feed it to our animals. We put it in our drinks. We put it in all our processed food. And we may think we're getting a varied diet, but everything that you're eating in, in a hamburger has soy and corn in it. Everything that you drink in a soft drink has soy or corn in it. Everything we feed our animals have soy or corn in it. So that's a huge problem too. It's tough to get rid of unless it doesn't have a label on it. But you gotta be careful also. There's a lot of things in there. You know, I used to think that from the time I was 15 years old, this is a perfect diet. Mm, 16, 17 years old. Ah, I changed a few things, this is a perfect diet. By the time I got to my age now, it's like, it's, it's, it's a path. You learn and you grow and you adjust. So there's nothing in my mind that's a perfect diet because everything is changing around us so fast. But if you have a basic philosophy, you can, you can adapt as it changes. So that's, you have to pay attention to what's going on to see what we are doing to the original food. That's, that's, where, it, that's where it is. And so how have things changed? Uh, how are things different now than when you were growing up in terms of uh, nutrition and, mm. and food, the food? Uh... You know, um, the, the, the things that's changed is it's a lot easier to get information out there. It's a lot easier to Photoshop things. It's a lot easier to put YouTube videos out there. It's a lot easier to get influenced by Facebook. Um, it's a lot in easier to get influenced by athletes. It's a lot in easier to get influenced by so many different people that you are totally confused. So gluten is now a big one. I am on a gluten-free diet. I'm allergic to gluten. If you ask a person who says that, and sometimes I do it because I'm mean, what's gluten? They have no idea. They have no idea. But they know it's bad. How do you know that? How do you know gluten is bad? Where does gluten come? Well, it's in wheat. Wheat is, is wheat bad for you? Is, is rice bad for you? Maybe. Is grass bad for you? I think that the biggest difference now is if you repeat something often enough, it becomes true. Sports drinks. We know that sports drinks are good for you. We just know it. We know that protein powder in your smoothie is good for you. There's no question in our mind. That's the difference. Why? It never used to be this easy to get lousy stuff to put in your body. Now it's simple. So there's a big problem. You know, when, again, at the bank, they're being very nice. They have lollipops on the counter, so when you walk in with your kid, it gets a lollipop. That child now 
is on lollipops. When, when we did a um, kids class here, we have apples. We have oranges. Jody brought in all these just food. The kids come running in. Instead of lollipops, they're saying, where's the apples? Where's the tangerines? Where's the clementines? It's easy. Bake sales. Bake sales at the school. Bake sales for the kids. There's another thing that's going to get me in trouble. That's child abuse. It's not on purpose, but it's child abuse. Jody grew her own. She had her kids grow their own herbs and spices. They sold them. Made more money than the bake sales. And the kids did it themselves. Those are the kind of things that we need to keep in mind because it's so much easier to have another one to get me into trouble. Girl Scout cookies. You know, we have people here selling Girl Scout cookies. We'll give them the money for the Girl Scouts, but they don't want the cookies. It, it, it's difficult um, in those kind of things because you don't want to say no. You don't want to seem like you're a horrible person. So we'll donate to the Girl Scouts, but not the cookies. It's tough, but so what? It's tough to be sick in bed with tubes coming out of every orifice in your body too. So, you know, you make that decision. and. And to start them, to start them at kids is, is, is easier said than done too because you have to convince the parents that I had a client one time and she got it, but she's bringing in a, a, a bag of chicken McNuggets to the child kids center over there that, you know, it's a plastic room with a television and giving her kids the, the chicken McNuggets. I was, it's for the kids. You know, I mean, I'm eating healthy, but, you know, they're kids. Repeat that again. You know, it just makes no sense. It makes no sense, but that's the thinking. So that's a big difference in the way we're growing up. Big difference. Everything's quick, everything's fast, and everything's horrible. <laughs> so does it, with this sort of, uh, it seems like a lifestyle, not so much a diet or no. an exercise. That's it. Is this lifestyle require, it seems like it requires tremendous willpower. Is that, is that true? I can eat anything I want. I can eat as much as I want. I could eat any time I want. And it's all delicious. Does that sound like willpower? It sounds like the perfect world. And I move. I'm outside, I'm hiking, I'm lifting, I'm bringing home furniture from places outside. So willpower is a funny word. Willpower, uh, it's, it's, it's easy. It's that easy and again, it's that hard. But once you get there, once you make the commitment that, or just, just the awareness that yeah, that's, that's what I'd like to do. And have freedom, it's freedom. I, I don't understand how people think it's willpower. Oh, not everybody can do what you do. What? It's, 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 it's not hard. All you have to do is make the commitment. That's it. All you have to do is not even a commitment. All you have to do is realize or believe that the other stuff is horrible for you. It's horrible. Not only for you, but, you know, we have health care problems. We have insurance problems. We have uh, uh, health care cost problems. I, I literally went to the doctor when I broke my leg and when I got Lyme disease. That's it. And, you know, like, some people could think the 67 is old, but it's not. It's not old. It's just the beginning. You, do you realize how many opportunities are cut off because you decided you're not going to eat healthy or you're not going to phys be physically active? When you get to be 30, I hear people 30, 40 years old, oh, I'm getting so old, oh, I used to be able to do this. When an opportunity comes along and you're 50 and you're 60 and you're 70, you can take it. How's that willpower? That's not willpower, that's just freedom. 
and you're able to do things that, and, and, and the other thing that's amazing about it is it's nothing special. Somebody comes up to me and they say, wow, you look good for that age. I say, no, I don't. Here's another thing that's going to get me into trouble. You just don't look right. You don't look good for your age. Nothing special. It is nothing special. This is the way people will function if they eat right and they exercise. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to have a genetic problem. You could. You could very well have that problem. You could be predisposed to have diabetes and cancer and heart disease. And yes, all that's true. And it's in your body. But you could think of it as, as, as a gun, a loaded gun. You decide if you're going to pull the trigger or not. And you'll pull the trigger if you go out and you have your hamburgers and you have your... And there's nothing wrong with a hamburger either. If you found out some kind of wild boar out there and you caught it and not farm raised and man left it alone, go eat it. I don't care. Good luck. But these are choices that we make to pull that trigger. You know? And because it doesn't happen instantly, we don't think it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All you have to do is go look. Look around. It's going to happen if you make poor choices. It's, it's, it's not rocket science or physical science or physics, you know? It's easy. It's so easy for people to understand. You have an apple and you have a hot dog. Which one's healthier? Isn't that a hard question? I guess um, the only thing I, that I could think of uh, left is, um, I guess typically um, the standard diet or eating habits, at least in this country, are you wake up, you have breakfast, then around noon you have lunch, and mm. then later on you have dinner. Mm. So is that, do you still follow that, or is, or is it something else? It, uh, again, um, I eat anytime I want, whenever I want however I want, as much as I want, any time I want. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner to me, and I could be wrong on this. I don't know. You know, I, I remember 30,000 years ago, it was hard to find food when I was walking around at night. So, you know, maybe I didn't eat at night. Maybe I just stopped eating when I couldn't see anymore. That, that's very possible. So I'm, I'm open to that suggestion. You know, I don't really know. And, and, and if I didn't eat anything for a while and I woke up and I smelled that, that, that delicious um, dandelion that was over there and I went over and I ate it, that could be my breakfast or maybe a termite or something like that. You know, so maybe I did eat when I woke up in the morning the first thing. I don't know. But that's, that's... If everything else that you're doing is thoughtful and you're eating unprocessed, take off that adjective, and you're eating food, and the biggest problem you have is when you're going to eat it, you're in great shape. You're in marvelous shape. So that's open to me. So that's, you know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know yet. But I'm glad to have that as a problem not solved. I don't care. I don't care. Maybe I will. But that's another one of those paths I was talking about. Maybe in two years from now I'll say, yes, absolutely, it's very important. But right now, this is not important to me. All the other stuff, looking for food is the important stuff. And being physically active outside, that's the important stuff. Later on, maybe down the road, I'll think about when. Right now, it's not important. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm trying to think. Is there anything you, you, you want to add? No, I think uh, I think I covered it all. If you, if you have any more questions, you know, I mean, basically, awesome. simplicity. Yeah. Eat food, stay physically active, and get outside. How do you feel about uh, canned beans as opposed to beans that you cook? Oh well, they're cooked already. The beans, right, in the can? Are they cooked already? Yeah. So that, that's all right to eat that? Uh, again, that, that goes with the... If you look at the thing and it says beans, yeah. 
Well, you can buy a package of beans and, and you'd have to boil Soak them. Soak them and boil them and yeah. you do all that stuff. So you know, and then if you get if you get canned beans in in a can that's not going to leach chemicals into it, you know, and that's the worst thing that you're eating, I wouldn't worry about that. You know, the cheesecake before it, and the 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 can of Coke before that, and then you eat a can of beans to get healthy. Nah, it's not going to work. But if you're eating food and canned beans happen to be there, and they say beans on them, and that's the worst thing you could think it's going to happen. You're fine. So what's your choice of sweetener? If you, if you don't use agave and you don't use maple syrup, so what's your sweetener? Raw honey, Raw fruit. Honey. Okay. What about dates. dates? Well, see, now again, on dried fruit, you do have to be careful because uh, a lot of people think that dried fruit has more sugar in it. Now, if I take three raisins, and I take three grapes, I'm doing the same thing. There's no difference. I have a glass of water if I have the raisins. But if I take three grapes and a handful of raisins, that's a problem. Because a handful of raisins, you can get 40 raisins in there. Try and eat 40 grapes. Tough to do. So just be careful. You measure things by weight, by volume. If you take two ounces of raisins versus two ounces of grapes, you're going to get a lot more sugar. Absolutely. That's why you count them. Because one raisin equals one grape. But it's very hard to eat one raisin. You know, if you take six grapes, you're happy. But if you take six raisins, it's like you didn't even eat anything. So that's why you have to be careful with dates and stuff like that. So you're saying that um, coconut oil is not good? No good? And olive oil, no good? I am saying that coconut oil is wonderful for you. And I am saying that olive oil is wonderful for you if you get it with the rest of the coconut. If you get it with the rest of the olive. How do you do that? You eat the olive and you eat the coconut. Yeah. And you eat the avocado. And avocado oil is wonderful for you. Eat the avocado. It's the perfect proportions that you're supposed to have with the perfect mix of everything else. But if you get rid of the avocado and throw it all away and you just take the oil, you're going to need 20 avocados to get a tablespoon of oil. That's where you run into trouble. You want avocado oil? We use avocados like crazy. Whenever it says oil, we put it in an avocado. The whole thing. When it says coconut oil, we put in the whole coconut. It works. So I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying we use it in the wrong proportions. all cooking on with the oils in our pans. I don't agree with it. Is that what you're saying? That we're doing it wrong? I have plenty of nutritionists who tell me I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm just offering a point okay. of view. Yeah. You want olive oil, eat the olive. You want avocado oil, eat the avocado. The way it came from the earth. Do you ever cook anything in a pan? Mm, yeah, I guess I do. And what, what would you use, water? Mm -hmm. or water. water. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned how like Facebook and social media and the internet and everything like that kind of has kind of morphed everyone's perspectives on like nutrition and uh, exercise. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so are there any uh, online resources that you trust, that you follow? And if so, like what are those? Um, you know, I don't know exactly which ones I would recommend, but when I read through them, like I have one on the, on the uh, refrigerator over here now. And certain articles, when I read through them, I'll agree with them maybe 60, 70%. Most of them I disagree with completely. So, and, and on those sites themselves, I'll disagree. So you have to go on on your own. They are out there. They are out there, but there's none that are all the time, perfect. Now that may be that I'm wrong, but you know I keep that in mind also. It's just like health food stores. You, <laughs> Jody and I went and did a race one time. We went into this organic health food store. We couldn't find anything to eat. There was no food in there. It was all pretend health. You you, you see people coming out of there with organic tortilla chips and you know organic 
donuts and gluten-free pretzels. You know, it, you have to really have an understanding of what you think is for real, and then it'll be a lot easier for you to figure it out. What do you think of wheatgrass and wheatgrass shots? And you know, again, if 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 do I think of it as medicine? A lot of people will, will have a salad as medicine. I had my salad, so now I can go do anything I want. I had my wheatgrass, so now I can go drink anything I want. Now I, you know, I got my energy for today. Now I can go out and eat the pizza that, you know, they treat the exercise in the same way. I'm going out tonight, so I got to make sure that I do my cardio. Wheatgrass, I don't know. You know, you're juicing it. Um, you could chew it. I eat grass, you know, when I'm running in the woods, I'll take a piece of grass and I'll chew on it as I'm running. It's, it's great. You know, I just got to make sure where you get it from because we bring our dogs with us too. Can somebody who's a gluten intolerant eat, eat grass? Probably. You know, there was a discussion about it. Is it does it have gluten in it or not? It well, grass? gluten, gluten, again, gluten um, is, is, a byproduct of processing. Gluten doesn't just grow from the ground. It's in certain items, just like sugar. White sugar is in sugar cane, but you can't get white sugar out of sugar cane. You can't get gluten out of a wheat unless you process it. It turns into this, that's where you get pizza dough from. So you get stretches and that's how you get bread that, that grow because they need it and take the bran off and they take the germ out. You know, so it lasts forever. And as you pull it, and pull it, and pull it more, it gets harder and harder and harder. That's the gluten. It turns into Turkish taffy. So we're all gluten intolerant because it's processed <coughs> wheat. You don't process the wheat. It's not, there's no gluten that's going to affect you. What do you think of pizza parties for children? Oh, they're great. <laughs> If you're, if you're a child abuse person. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the trick is this. You have six frogs on a branch, right? Five of them decide to jump in the water. How many are left? One. Okay. There's still six on that branch because they all decided to, but nobody did it. So you guys can all decide it's gonna work. But in my own opinion, and this is my sales pitch to the gym too, you're not gonna do it. You will not do it. And the reason why I know you're not going to do it is because nobody does. This is an apple, this is a hot dog. You're going to take the hot dog on Super Bowl Sunday. Simple as that. One person out of 200 stay in the gym, they come in. There's one right there. One person out of 200. So I'm gonna to count to 200 people here. One of you will attempt it. Five years from, when somebody comes in, I'd say five years from now, I'll know if you're serious. So if you decide to do it, five years from now, come back and I'll say, okay, maybe you decided to do it. So that's how I know you're not going to. I love to end on a positive note. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a diabetic. Ah. And I want to correct you on one thing. Actually. Go ahead. You taught me right about type 1, type 2. Uh -huh. They used to call them juvenile and late onset. Yes. And they thought they were the same thing, but different in...